Hello everybody, welcome to our introductory training class. Introductory training class. This is our first ITC. We're going global and we wanted to make sure we had you online so that everybody could listen and learn along with us. I am sitting here at a table with Angela and Shannon and Say it for me one more time. Sharony. Sharony. And then on the speakerphone, we have people from all across the country listening in. So this is really an exciting time. Now what I've done, those of you on the line or on the phone um, or on TV, you don't have one of these. But what I've done for the people here at the table is I've just handed them a little bit of an outline. An outline for our ITC. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about our company background a little bit. I'm going to tell you about some of the training materials we have available. I'm going to review the objectives of a showing with Park Lane. I'm going to tell you about the good, better, and best ways to get the jewelry. We're going to spend a little bit of time on hostess coaching and our wonderful hostess program. And then we're going to talk about the actual show and how we do it. And then sort of end with some of the um, perks that we get as Park Laners. Some of the perks we get um, so that we can earn free jewelry and some of the ongoing different contests that we have. So. Does so anybody have any questions about that? Yeah. And don't be afraid to really interact with me because oh, okay. whatever questions you have are questions that people on the phone and um, at home on their computers have too. First, let me tell you a little bit about Park Lane. Well, first, let me tell you a little bit about, about myself because um, I'm way more important than Park Lane. <laughs> <laughs> but my name is Mary Grace Lewandowski. And actually, um, the number one reason that you should do Park Lane is because of me. In my story and I'll tell you why I started um, I used to be a second grade teacher and teachers don't make enough money so I needed some extra extra income and I started to do direct sales I used to work for a, a candle company and I worked for them for about 14 years and within the second year of doing it, it had really taken off it was my full-time gig I took myself to like the top 10 income earners in in that whole company well two and a half years ago enter Park Lane and you know, they, they, I pretty much was having some concerns about the other company, but when I looked at the programs that Park Lane had to offer, do you know what it would have to take for someone to walk away from, like, the number nine income earner in another direct sales company to come to a new one? Mm -hmm. You know, that in itself, I kind of did the research for you, basically, mm -hmm. to let you know that this is where it's at. And what we did, my husband and I, like, we're not... You know, we're not stupid people, so we're like, we have to go home and we have to investigate this. And after I get through with this and you hear about all the programs that Park Lane has to offer, you'll see where I'm coming from and why I chose Park Lane. But one of the things I love to tell people is I, I had uh, 14 years with this other company. What I did is I came home, sat down with my husband. We took my lineage and we plugged it into the Park Lane Profit Program. So to see how much I would have made if I was doing Park Lane instead of Party Lane. Get it? Okay. Well, when I left my last company, I was at about um, about $250,000 a year. I took that lineage, plugged it into the Park Lane Profit Program, mm -hmm. and that year I would have made $750,000. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the difference in the potential in the Profit Program. Mm -hmm with Park Lane, with uh, many of the other direct sales companies out there. And what was so, it was so rewarding for me is that was just a wing and a prayer and, you know, based on some facts and investigation. But here I am now, two and a half years in, and last year I made more money than I did in any given year with my other company, just two and a half years in. So I really like to tell you that you're in a really good place for direct sales in general. The other thing I always like to kind of just touch on, um, Park Lane is a company. They've been around for 57 years. Um, they're family owned, which is really unusual in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, there's no like uh, stockholders or anybody that we have to worry about. Um, they keep it, they keep it very. Um, what's the word that I want to use? Um, slim. Okay, like. The people that work there are mostly family. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of arbitrary spending, right? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there's a statistic out there that the, the most generous direct, direct sales companies give back somewhere like between 30 and 38% of their income or the monies to the field. Mm -hmm. Park Lane is more in the 70% bracket, okay? So they're putting their money back into the customers and the hostesses 
and the reps. Mm -hmm. So they're a great company for that. Go online like I did, check them out. They have an A plus um, uh, rating in the Better Business Bureau. Okay, they're the number one jewelry company, direct sales jewelry company in the world. Number one direct sales jewelry company in the world, which is really neat. And they have an interesting story because 57 years ago, when Shirley and Arthur Levine started the company, can you even imagine that? They were 16 and 18 years old and they wanted to start their own company. And they chose jewelry, and I love this, because it withstands the test of time. And it does. It's interesting. Um, well, so on they go profitable, great company, you know, they wanted to be able to leave a company to their children's children. That was one of their goals from the get-go. 2002, it was time. They decided to hand it down to their sons. Of their eight children, three of the sons co-own it. Well, here is why my husband and I decided that Park Lane was the perfect storm, too. Because in 2002, they decided to make a whole bunch of changes. Not really huge ones, because the company had a good stable base. But ones that just needed to help it maybe come up with the times a little bit more. For instance, can you picture this? That's when they got computers. <laughs> In 2002, they didn't have computers. So they got computers, okay? They lifted some rules. They used to have some rules. In fact, this will be interesting to the people on, this, on the phone and on TV. Um, or the, the TV, the computer. In 2002, up to that point, because they were very aware that people needed good training in order to be successful in a business. They used to have a rule that you couldn't hire anyone or recruit anyone who didn't live within 50 miles of you. Mm -hmm. Well, these people wouldn't right. be able, mm -hmm. okay? So you can see why when they lifted that rule because of the way time is now, that it just changed everything. Mm -hmm. Well, what it transferred into is that since 2002, they've had double-digit growth every single month. Mm -hmm. Every single month of their their business. So this is the way I saw it. I hope this is the way you see it, saw it, see it. I'm like, this is like the perfect storm because you have this, the established security of a company that's been around for 57 years. Mm -hmm. They're cash rich. They own everything. They own their jewelry houses. They own their um, building. Mm -hmm. You know, they own their printing presses. They own everything. They're fine. They're viable. They're cash rich. And yet the newness of a startup company and something really interesting that had happened to me when I decided to, to take this journey was that I had been offered a, an, a job as a second in command of a whole entire new jewelry company. But it was a startup company. Very flattering, very um, tempting. But when I did my homework, it's like, you know, 97% fail rate on on new companies. Mm -hmm. So I thought, this has got it all though. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, um, for those of you that are sitting here, so in the St. Louis area, many years ago, there was a huge presence of Park Lane here in this area. But because of the rules that they had and stuff, when good leadership dies out or retires, the people go. Mm -hmm. So it had gotten where there was no one here anymore, mm -hmm. for the most part. Not totally, but you know. So uh, on we come, huge resurgence two and a half years ago. So what's going to happen when you go into shows and stuff, you're going to have people come in. My grandma <laughs> heard I was coming to a park. Has it happened yet? Heard I was coming to a Park Lane story, and, I mean, show, and she was so excited. So it's really fun because that's what happened. So two and a half years ago when we took this on new in this area, and as many of you on the phone and you know, that are watching us, you may be one of the very first in your area the, of the resurgence of this generation. We got out there and we were determined to establish market recognition, one person at a time. I almost think in some ways the fact that you're sitting here now, that you're, you're even in a better place than we were, because we might have been the first, but we, we had to do that digging. We had to start that momentum, and now the momentum's going where people are talking about Park Lane. So, very exciting opportunity for you. And I do a lot of, um, I'm actually gonna take this bracelet off. I do have to tell everybody though, this is my Stop favorite thing. Do you okay. know what this is called when you have all different bracelets on your arm like this? Layering. Layering. Some people call it stacking, which I enjoy because mm -hmm. I've never been stacked. <laughs> Can I say that? Okay, but this is called an arm party. Oh, so no matter what, yeah. you could just be sitting there and you're still in a happy mood because right. you've got an arm party going on. Yeah, but I'm going to take it off because sometimes they clang on the cameras and that can be kind of 
annoying to people, so take them off. Um, so anyway, that's where we are, and that's why you're in a really good place. And I do do a lot of motivational training, read a lot of books, um, watch a lot of uh, motivational speakers, get into the whole business section, and we're always reading up on how we can grow our businesses. And I always love to tell you how special you are, because I'll tell you why you're special. A lot of reasons, I'm sure. Um, but one is, if you had to take a guess, out of 100% of people in the world, what percentage would you guess are willing to take a chance on something? Uh, I'd say 7%. 7%? 10%. 10%? <laughs> I said 30 the first time I heard it. 25 or 30. It's 5%. You're way closer than I was. 5%. 5% of people in the world are willing to take a chance on something. Even something like this where you say, there's no risk. The worst thing that can happen is you don't like it, and then we'd still love to be your jewelry lady, you know. Um, don't overthink it. But 95% of the world is into what we call failure avoidance. Mm -hmm. Failure avoidance. Stay on the straight and narrow, you know, don't, you know, complain about your situation, but don't do anything about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that you're here, whether you're here to hear about it for the first time, whether you already know that you're going to do it, makes you very, very special. I hope you feel special, because oh, it's really yeah. true. Does that make you feel special? <laughs> Good. That was supposed to make you feel special. Okay. Any of you ever done direct sales before? Yeah. For a small stint. Okay. For a, a small stint. A okay. When I, very often, you know, Parkling's one of the only companies, too, that will hire in people, you know, in at higher experience levels and stuff, too. So I always ask that question, because if you've never been in direct sales before, like, I try to help you learn from what I did wrong. <laughs> and when I first started in direct sales 16 years ago, my number one goal was to sell, right? Mm -hmm. Is it yours? Probably, I mean, we get in here and we're like, I'm gonna sell jewelry, I'm gonna sell jewelry, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, but it's way, but it's way bigger than that. It's way bigger than that because what, what you really wanna know from the beginning is you wanna sell, but you also want to sell more, so book more showings, we call it booking, you know, get more showings, you want to expand your business, and then third, ideally you want to hire, mm -hmm. you know, they call it recruiting, mm -hmm. it's not my favorite word, I call it hiring, you want to hire, because that's what's going to grow your business bigger, especially when you have a big ground floor opportunity like this, okay, so we're going to talk about the different programs that Park Lane has that support us in all those three areas of our business, and the first one is through the selling. And this is something that is absolutely, we're going to London on the Park Lane trip in two weeks, so I have to use my new word. This just gobsmacked me when I first looked into Park Lane. But uh, if you've ever been to any kind of showing or in-home direct sales, um, it, the hostess usually makes out with something. Mm -hmm. But I never saw anything that was so spectacular for the guests. Right. And we call it the customer buying plan. And we refer to it in the industry as good, better, and best, okay? Now, I have, like, this little cheat sheet that we made up, and you can make um, copies of them and put them inside the books and everything if you want to, but you really won't probably end up using them very much. But you just kind of want to know that this is the way it works, and it's in the inside front cover of our book, okay? And basically what the way that it works is level one is if you should choose to spend or if a customer chooses to spend between $30 and $59, in regular priced item, then they get to go back and get anything they want up to the amount they spent for $12, okay? People at my show will look at me like you are, like they pretend like they got what I said, but they had no idea, okay? 78% <laughs> <laughs> of people in the world are visual learners, mm -hmm. all right? So I can teach you a couple ways to make this visual for your customers, but just as reps, as fashion directors, the easiest way to put it, I think, is um, we bundle. You know, here in St. Louis, you know how all the commercials are about bundling with charter? Okay, I go, we bundle like charter, you know, and they laugh. I go, I only like to see you pay full price for your littlest items. So let's talk about earrings. And let's say you buy um, three pair of $12 earrings and you spent $36. But you got three pair of earrings. You already got three items, you spent $36. Well, now you get to go back and get any item you want for $36 or less for $12. Get it? Okay, but there's more. <laughs> Can you hurt take it? Okay. Um, level two is sixty to eighty nine dollars. Then you get two items for twelve, and we throw in a third for free. 
Can you imagine? A third for free. You're welcome. And then the <laughs> highest level of all is 90 and over. And honestly, it's hard not to go there. Kind of silly not to go there because that's the greatest value, 90 or over. Then you get three for 12 and we throw in a fourth for free. So if you can picture this, let's go back to that earring scenario. I'm going to use um, $20 earrings so I can do the math in my head. But somebody buys five $20 pair of earrings and they spend $100. And they have five new pair of earrings and they spend $100. That's when they would go would go back and get their hundred dollar necklace for twelve, their hundred dollar other thing for twelve, their hundred dollar third thing for twelve, and yet a fourth thing for free. So in this scenario, I just did, and you see, you guys can't see me on the phone, but I'm holding up my hands because people are visual learners. So if you can say, okay, watch this left hand, okay. I'm putting one finger up at a time. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred. You just bought five twenty dollar items. You spent a hundred dollars. Okay, now you get to take advantage of the specials. Uh, $100 necklace, $12. $100 other thing, $12. $100 other thing, $12. Fourth thing, free. $136 for $500 worth of jewelry. And that in itself, just doing a little visual like that really helps mm -hmm. them. Okay? Another thing, because you do, you want to get this program out there as, in a really neat way as soon as you can. Because mm -hmm. this is going to really draw the girls in. P women love a bargain, right? Okay. One of the gals in our team, she's a senior division, her name is Lisa Adams. I'm sure other people have done it, but she made it up for the first time that we ever saw it. But her very first roll of jewelry that she shows at a show totally illustrates the program. So she unrolled the jewelry, mm -hmm. and she would put everything, in fact, you've got a lot of it on right there, hon. She'll put it on someone, and she'll say, okay, isn't this cute? She'll put it on a piece at a time, and she'll go, retail value of this whole entire ensemble is $378. Okay, if you want that whole entire ensemble, you know, you can get it out of your checkbook, write me a check for $378, give me your credit card, you know, or, and go ahead and leave. However, if you would prefer to learn how you could get this for $136, stay with me. And they're like, okay. And then she begins to take it off the person, you know, so she'll do the little items first, and she says, I'm going to charge you for these three little things. And she'll go, 30, 40, 30, or whatever, and she'll go, that's $100. That's all you're going to pay for full price. Okay? Now let's do the magic. And then she'll begin to take the bigger things off them. And she goes, this is normally $92, but for you today, 12 This is, you know, so she'll put it on them and then take it off them to illustrate the thing. So right away, they've kind of got it in their head about how this whole pricing. Other thing, I mean, we could go on and on. This is why I want to come to trainings regularly. But a lot of times we use our own bodies. Not our bodies, but... <laughs> But we'll use what we have on, yeah, you know, yeah. to kind of just illustrate how it all works. So I think you got that part. So any questions about the customer buying plan? Because it is. It's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, when I first went into my first show, what I was worried about was not my first Park Lane show because by then I had brought some experience, but my very first direct sales show as I was driving to my first show, okay, pretend you're driving to your first show. Mm -hmm. What are you, and be honest, what are you, what would you be worried about? What would you be thinking about? Um, what type of questions people might ask about okay. the jewelry or... Like the quality or the, right. you know, guarantee and all that stuff. Will people feel pressured to buy? Okay. You're good. I had not thought of that one. <laughs> I was I worried about the one. names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was worried about the names and stuff, you know. I was worried about my presentation, yes. you know. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. of course you want to put some time and thought into that stuff because you don't, yeah. you want to feel like, you know, knowledge is power yeah. and all that good stuff. But honest to gosh, here's a scenario for you. We came back from our uh, Las Vegas convention about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. They unveiled the whole line for us, okay. Saw it on stage. And I... And we went home on Sunday, and I had a show on Sunday night. <laughs> Do you think I knew all the names? That's there was no possible right. way, okay? So you, you're going to learn the names, but as you go into mm -hmm. your first show, kind of relax about it a little bit and have fun, you know, just have fun. Because they don't, it, it's, a, it's almost a, a better um, nice laid-back setting mm -hmm. when you could say, oh, you know, 
put a little sparkly pink thing down on your wish list because we don't quite know the name of that one yet. But don't don't agonize over it is my point, you know, because I think sometimes when people, and I do, I know all the names now. It doesn't take you long. It's like your children. They just look like their names after a while, and you know, it just, and people will ask me, how do you know all the names? And I'm like, well, just listen carefully because you're going to hear the customers going, hand me Hootie. Give me Brittany, you know. The customers know the names too. So don't get too, um, don't get too hung up on that. What you want to be more aware of um, as you go into your show is about getting more shows, okay? Um, and again, I'm just helping you learn from everything that I did wrong because I was so concerned about just that show, that presentation, those customers, and much less going home and put in the computer and everything, you know, that I realized later that I missed some really good opportunities, things that I learned later that if I had employed them early on, I would have grown my business faster, okay? So when you go into a show um, or a showing, your hostess is also going to get free choices. So we talked about the customer buying program, and we're going to talk about the hostess program in just a second, and that's what helps you get your shows. But I wanted to do, you know, I meant to bring, um, I'll just use some, can I use M&M's? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over the hostess program. But one of the things that I kind of wanted to tell you is, as you go in to do your, your first showings, like a lot of our um, hostesses are kind of savvy. Like they've done in-home shows before, and they will say like, oh, did she get her booking? Did you ever hear that? Like, oh, she got her booking. Don't worry about it. She got her booking. Well, we have a little adage out there that when you're booking shows, one to replace, two to grow, and three to explode. So ideally, from the get-go, thank you so much, you want to have a, 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 a goal of getting two to three shows at every show. Okay? Is it going to happen every time? No. But we have little tricks of the trade to teach you how to do that. And mostly it's an expectation. If you go in there and you have an expectation that you want to get two or three at every show, then it's going to happen. You want to expand your, your um, business, it's just exponential growth. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing with M&M's. Well, you know, it's not easy being a movie star. I'm having a low blood sugar attack. No. <laughs> no, I am going to do something with this. Okay. Now, ideally, they've done this research. Now, Angela, you're... They've done this research, and they have proven that if you want to really, really, really jumpstart your business, and I did, you know, I was really just... I wanted to jumpstart my business. If you really want to jumpstart your business, then you really want to start with five shows. Okay? You want to start with five shows. So Angela's going to start with five shows, and I'm going to start with five shows. Okay? Now, when you, if you're like really serious about your business and you want to get it off the ground, which when I came over to Park Lane, especially, I very much was because I had an income to replace, I was aware that I was going to take five shows. And I was going to cram them into like a one to two week time frame. Do you have to do that forever? No. Do you have to even do it the first time? No. You know, we're not going to take your kid away if you don't. But if you want to jumpstart your business, maybe even work a little harder than you normally would in the beginning. Okay. Then I was aware that these five people, I wanted them to be from five different directions, mm -hmm. five different parts of my life. And I'm not from... St. Louis originally. I'm from New York. I told you that earlier. If you know anything about St. Louis, if you didn't go to high school here, you're never going to have a friend. <laughs> Everybody's like, what high school did you go to? And as soon as I'm like, oh, I didn't go to high school. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. I'm not going to fit in here. Um, so this really served like a social need for me too. But my point is I didn't know a lot of people. Okay. But I knew I wanted it to be a business. I didn't want to sell to my family and friends. Do you? No. Forever? Mm -mm. Maybe to start, you know. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Okay, so you want to pick five different directions. So the girl that I, that first coached me in this type of business, she goes, you know, everybody knows 800 people. They're not your best friends, but everybody knows 800 people. You'd be able to come up with like a list of 800 people that you sort of know or somebody else knows, okay? So then I was real, real aware and I thought, okay, five different directions. So I purposely did like one from where I used to work, one from where my, cousin, my husband currently works, one through my um, daughter's friends, one through my kids' teachers. Get it? And and anybody that's in a service industry, they like a hairdresser or a nail lady, your bank, they get it. 
You know, it's all about networking and building business. If they didn't have us, then they wouldn't have business either. So they're normally very happy to return the service, mm -hmm. you know, and especially when you can tell them what's in it for them. When you can say to the hairdresser, I'm really excited. Let's have a jewelry showing. Give me a bunch of your cards. I'm going to be in girls' living rooms blank times a week, and I'm going to recommend you to people. And in the meantime, we can do this big jewelry set up, you know, send off, and we can get me rocking and rolling, okay? What you want to say to your, your sisters and your moms and your cousins, they will sabotage you by accident. They don't mean to. They love you. But here's what they'll say. Oh, come or don't come. I'm just having a show to get my sister started. Ever hear things like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what you say. You go, sister, <laughs> do you want me to sell to you forever? Because I don't want to ever sell to you. I want to be able to give you everything for a gift. I don't want you to ever have to be my customer, okay? So on that very first show that you're going to have to kick me off or help me, invite so many people that I don't know. Purposely invite people that I don't know and ask your friends to bring friends so I can get outside of this circle as fast as possible. Now that speaks to them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, yeah, you know. So you kind of set it up and coach them just like you would anybody else. Okay, so now here you are. You got your first five shows. Angela has five shows. I have five shows. Angela goes to all five shows and she gets one show at every show. And I go to every show and I get two shows at every show because I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. So, five shows for Angela. Okay, she gets one at every show. She still has five. Okay, get it? Mm -hmm. I go in, I get two at every show. I now have ten. Okay, this in itself is a training moment. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Cancellation, cancellation. Okay, mm -hmm. if I could tell you how many times, mm -hmm. and I was one of them too. The first time someone canceled on me, I was appalled. I just thought it was the rudest thing. <laughs> Didn't they know I was counting on it? Didn't they know I needed what in the world we're doing? Okay, let's put a really quick end to this. Um, and so the camera can see you. Please raise your hand if you've ever canceled anything. <laughs> we all have. Cancellations happen. They're part of the world. They're part of business. Okay, so we have to build them into our business and not get take it personally or get all discouraged when people cancel. Okay, so now you're down to four. I'm down to nine. Ooh. I thought I would just throw no, it a few more it. there. No, yeah, no, you can't steal mine. <laughs> Stealing my booking. Okay, you have four. I have nine. One at every show. You still have four. Two at every show. I now have 18. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Cancellation. What the heck? I'm going to take two cancellations. Okay? One at every show. You still have two. Two at every show. I have 32. Cancellation. I'll take five cancellations, okay? You have one. I have 27 still, even with the five cancellations. Cancellation, you know, two at every show. I'm up to 27 times two is 54. Mm -hmm. Do you see how quickly that can happen? And it's all because your focus is on multiple bookings at every show. And you think, is it always going to happen? No, you guys. I mean, I'm supposedly, you know, one of the best, well, you know, highest salesmen in our group, and I leave lots of shows with no bookings, you know, but then I leave others with five or six. And mm -hmm. what I have found is if I go in there with a goal and it's a mutually um, beneficial goal for everybody, then that's going to happen. So, for example, maybe I just have like three little gift bags out or four for this. So three little ones and a big one. And it doesn't matter. You could have candy in there. You could have, um, uh, we'll talk about a little bit what else you could put in there. These things called HRCs. But you could... To explain to your crowd, like, oh my gosh, these are so fun. They're full of surprises. The minute that you decide you want to have your own showing, you come and take a bag. If all three bags get taken, then the hostess gets the big one, and that's got something really cool in it. Okay, you know what happens? They egg each other on. You know, the hostess eggs people on, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are all kinds of little tricks that we kind of help you learn at different trainings. You want to make sure you're going to trainings because we're not always coming up with new ones. Really fun. Big business. It's exciting, isn't it? Okay, so let's talk about the hostess program. Because what I just said with multiple bookings, Parkerlene supports us in that too. They're they're perfect for supporting us in everything that we need. Okay, I'm going to share one of those. And this is something that you, you probably really want to go through and study is the hostess plan. Now, it's called the Five Star Hostess Plan. It's been the same exact hostess plan for 57 years. They have committed to us that they will not take away. They will only add. And they already have. Okay, so you're going to know some things that aren't even written here that we can do now. Okay, star number one, a thank you award. 
You see in the little print at the top where it says when the hostess has her guest list back to you within three days? You see that? Okay. Um, really, it's the honor system. Perkling has no way of knowing whether or not the hostess got her guest list back to you within three days. But use it. If the idea is for it to build your business. Don't just automatically give it to them. Use it to build your business. You know, so if you're like... Um, Oh, Angela, I'm so excited because you get to pick out one of these for $14 and just get your guest list back to me in the next few days and it's yours. And they're like, okay. You know, because we have a little adage out there, no guest list, no show. But if you've got invitations out already or evites, then they're going to hold their show. Okay? Mm -hmm. Something I learned to do even at a show. Somebody already um, just that very night booked their show. I'll, I'll give them a piece of paper and I'll say start to write down bunches of people that you want to invite because then I'll know I have your thank you award locked in for you. You know, if I go home and invite just those people, she'll give me more later. But even the fact that they're already invited, she's it's going to help you with your cancellations. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay, star number two. And I love this. I love this. $20 free per order. And I love to say this to the potential hostesses. I'm like, so it doesn't matter what your friends spend. It's $20 free per order. Your friend could spend 8 bucks, and you're still going to get $20 free. And they're like, that's unbelievable. And I know. And I go, but there's more. Listen to this. Take your blood pressure medicine. Okay, you ready? <laughs> when we get to 10 orders, we double it. Now, that's not written on here, but that's something you just need to know. Okay? When we get to 10 orders, we double it. So here's what I'll do. I'll say, okay, now I'm not saying you have to, but seriously, between the two of us, <coughs> don't you think we could collect 10 $20 orders? 10 $20 orders. And everybody, I mean, the crappiest girl in the room says, yeah. I go, no, I want you to think about that. <laughs> That's a $200 show, and you get $400 of free jewelry. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. You know? And this is what I say to him. I go, do you know why this is great for me, though, too? Do you know why this is great for Park Lane? On a $200 show, you're going to get $400 worth of free jewelry. What's going to happen when you go out into the world with this jewelry on? It comes right. back to me. We right. want the jewelry on you really, really badly. So we reward you unbelievably well. So they they just get this look on their face like, why wouldn't I, I do this? Okay. I have a tendency to segue a lot off into little things that are subsets of what we're talking about. But when I started this business, when we started this business two and a half years ago, one of the observations that we made was – people kind of seem to be done with the in-home show. Mm -hmm. Not just even the wording. You know, they hear it and they're like, mm -hmm. you know. They're <laughs> mm -hmm. But they're not done with fashion. Fashion is everywhere. Fashion is an undercurrent of every TV show. This up-and-coming generation, truthfully, in my other company, that was one of my biggest fears. We were losing that next generation. We are so solid with jewelry. Mm -hmm. That young up-and-coming generation, they love jewelry. And girls want to try their jewelry on. Jewelry does not show the same in a book. In fact, I always say part of the artisan's art is the way that the warmth of the skin will bring out a stone or the bling. We have to put it on people for them to see it, okay? So as we brainstormed and we're realizing people are kind of done with the in-home show, but we do have a service to provide and they do want jewelry, all we did was tweak the wording. So here's what we say. Right when I'm talking about this to someone and I'll go, not Angela, really. Don't you think between the two of us? Okay. And I'll say, and you know what? We don't, I don't even really do shows. I do personal appointments and private showings. Personal appointments mm -hmm. and private showings. It changed everything, girls, when we started using those words. Mm -hmm. First, because that is exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. And I very happily will sit with two or three people to do a showing. You know, so we don't even call them shows. We call them showings or private appointments. All right. We do a lot of one-on-one -on -one appointments. In fact, um, one of the gals that started w with me a couple of years ago, her name is Danielle, she'd be the first to admit she wasn't into fashion. And she really wanted to do this business. She knew we were building a dream team, but she just felt like, oh, my gosh, I just I don't know if I know enough about fashion. And I said, we'll learn, you know. Well, she did this. She did something to help herself, but in the end it ended up being absolutely brilliant, and we all still do it. She started to make a list of everybody that she knew that she just thought was sharp. You know, she said it wasn't even necessarily jewelry. They just always looked good, mm -hmm. you know. And she called them. And she said things like, hi, Shannon. It's, you know, Danielle. I, you know, you're not going to believe this because 
Me, of all people, I'm going into the jewelry business. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I have a lot to learn, and you are always so darn sharp. It would mean the world to me if you would meet me for a cup of coffee and just give me your opinion. Just give me your opinion on the jewelry. Okay. Well, then what she did is she would sit and she would meet with them. In fact, she had them so that they were like back to back, like four in a row. Okay. She'd um, meet with them. She'd take out like a roll of jewelry. And of course, they're like, oh, you know. And then she would say, now let me ask your opinion about the customer buying program. Mm -hmm. Smart, right? Mm -hmm. Now let me ask your opinion about the hostess thing. And then she'd say, now let me ask your opinion about how they pay the reps. And she said, I cannot even say that it was 98% successful. It was 100%. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them either booked it. She said she didn't necessarily sell a lot right then, but they all went to have showings. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to show their friends. Mm -hmm. So we've learned to just build that. Or they, most of them became reps. It was incredible. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's just a matter of getting the jewelry in front of people one person at a time. So isn't that a good idea? Yeah. So when you're thinking, how many of you get my five shows? You're like, well, I have five friends that would meet me and give me their opinion. You know, mm -hmm. it's really fun. Okay. When they get to ten orders, they also get to pick out one of these bracelets. And you, th you think people wouldn't care, but they do. They want that bracelet. It's David Yerman inspired. The real ones are like anywhere from $750 to $4,000. And it's like a little bit of a status symbol. And I tell them that. I'm like, oh, the status symbol. You got the 10 <laughs> orders bracelet, you popular girl. You know, so they really go for it. Okay, number three. They get any four items for half price. So this is above and beyond their free stuff and their thank you gift. They also can get any four items for half price. Which we get paid on. We get paid on the half price items. Okay? So if you're, I've learned to kind of, um, talk about the hostess credit earlier in the show, why other people are there. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, um, Angela, can I see your wish list? If you showed me your wish list, I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're going to get almost all of this for free with your regular hostess credit. Do you, do you want to also go get some half price items? And usually a lot of the time they say no because they got so much free. But then I would say, do you want one? Mm -hmm. Do you want I one? You know, that. so that way you can add the half price items onto, mm -hmm. your, onto the show. Okay? Hostess only collection. See, Parker Lane is brilliant because when they thought of this hostess program, they thought of anything that is a catalyst to for women to buy or want to be in the group or whatever. You show girls a bunch of things that the only way they can get it is by having a showing and they're going to be the only ones that have it. They want it. Okay, so that's the hostess only collection. And they're allowed to buy up to four of those at the hostess only price. There's a retail price and there's a hostess only price. Mm -hmm. The most cost-efficient way is for them to take advantage of all of this and then buy at the, re at the um, hostess price. Should they choose to put it in their free stuff, they can, but it has to be at the full retail price. You know, so okay. where maybe they could buy a forty, you know, a three hundred and sixty dollars something for a hundred dollars, um, and that would take up three hundred and sixty of their free stuff if they did it the other okay. way. Okay, so that's good to know, right? Yeah. It's good to know. And then the booking awards, star number five, okay, for the first booking. So, again, let's say Deb has a show, um, and Angela, you decide to have a show from her show. Deb gets to go to your show and get $50 worth of jewelry for $5. And then the second one, $50 more for four, five more dollars. And the third one, $100 for 10 Or she can save it all of it into the end and get $200 more for $20, Okay. Love that because instead of going, oh gosh, I got all those bookings, but now I got to go spend money at all those shows, they're excited about it because they get to go and get free jewelry at every show. And it's exciting for us because we get to verbalize that. So again, that goes back into the whole booking thing because when I'm able to say at a show like, Deb, do you remember you get $50 here because you booked from, I always say that like that and then the person's like, what? Everybody's like, and I go, you'll get it too when people book from you, you know, so all of that is, is good stuff, really good stuff. And then there's a three booking gift, which again, this just, this just goes to women wanting to be unique, to have something that nobody else has, you know, so it's really fun to bring some of those three booking gifts to your showings and, um, you know, like say ahead of time, you say to the hostess, now Shannon, which one of these rings do you really, really want? You don't give her a choice. She's got to get one. Which one do you want? Okay, yeah. and you pick it, you know, and I and I could say, put this on your finger till then, you know, and then I'll just say, show the ring again. She wants it so desperately, mm -hmm. three of you, three of you. And then I'll do this really, you know, funny thing sometimes, like, we call it a friendship ring. 
The three people that book shows, she'll name a prog after you. <laughs> but they're really like, and then it's easier for me to say at the end, like, hey, do you want to be a prong? You know? <laughs> really fun. So that's the hostess program. Now, this is going to blow your mind. Is that not a generous hostess program? Okay. Above and beyond all of this. Now you're in the secret no. Above and beyond all of this, as a rep, we always have the right to offer our hostesses another $100 worth of jewelry for $10. Another $100 worth of jewelry for $10. I know, isn't it crazy? Mm -hmm. It's not written anywhere. So it's kind of like our secret stash, you know? They call them HRCs or Hostess Reward Certificates, kind of like coupons, mm -hmm. you know? Again, when you go to enter the show, you just check a box. It's going to up their credit by 100 bucks when you do that. But use them to your advantage, you know? Do a little, oh, the girls have come up with so many fun things. You know, they'll say, um, hey, if you have a booking before I even get there, or one of your friends wants to have a private showing before I even get there, then I'm going to give you another $50 worth of jewelry on top of everything else you're getting. And they're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Or if you have five outside orders, another $50. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here you're offered in these incentives and it's not really costing you anything. You, you can say for the $5 or you can pick up the $5, whatever you want. Remember the little gift bag idea? Mm -hmm. You know, so you put, let's say you put 100 in each little gift bag. So they're thinking, if I pick a gift bag, I get another, I said, that's a coupon for another $100 worth of jewelry at your show. Above and beyond the normal hostess credit. Mm -hmm. Get it? Yeah. Okay, didn't cost you anything, but really helped you to promote mm -hmm. the business. Okay? So you know the hostess program? Mm -hmm. Inside and out? Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love to um, uh, share with people is I pick up little jewels of information from park leaners that have been around for a long time. And actually, Scott, our CEO, he did the business. He built a multi-million dollar group. And he told me that without fail, he hostess coached every single hostess um, personally. Now, I'm always going to be totally honest with you. I do 20 to 30 shows a month. I don't personally hostess coach every single hostess, okay? I should. Because after he told me that, I said, well, I never train on anything until I try it. So I came home from the trip, and I my next three shows, I did it. I set up an appointment with them, and I met them, and I sat down with them for 20 minutes, and I went over the hostess program with them. Okay, a couple really cool things happened. Okay, I also did some fun stuff, like I would leave them a piece of jewelry to wear between now and their show. I just, I acted like, um, it's almost like, you know, if you were going to buy drapes, and custom drapes and the person will come to measure first and help you pick out your fabric and find out what your style was. It felt like that. We feel mm -hmm. more like personal stylists then. I'm like, what is, you know, what kind of jewelry do you think your friends will like? What it, you know, what's their style? Who are some of your friends that you just know are going to be all over this and that I should um, be sure to give them a lot of attention because they'll want to have their own personal showing? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, that was great. Helped build a neat relationship with them all. It's wonderful. Another thing that came from this, though, I trained on this at one of these. I had notes from or emails from two of the new girls the next week, and they said, I really want to thank you for coaching or training us about going to see the hostess before her show. Mm -hmm. Because what they found was not only did it make for a better show, but they learned the hostess program because mm -hmm. they're sitting down with this person, mm -hmm. you know, so I thought that was really cool. So now I always train on it, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's your business, you do with it what you want, but um, it's pretty, if you want those first five, especially to be really successful, that would be a really, really, really good thing to do, okay? So just to clarify, do. there's two, there's a limit of two HRCs for each show? Yes. Okay. Yes. However, do you true. remember earlier when I said they will never take away, they will only add? Okay, this is why um, at different times during the year, they'll do some magical things. So, for example, for our whole month of January and oh, February, okay. it was 150 That's what I'm thinking about. It was 150 for 15 okay. So he'll add it. There's this wonderful time in the um, like middle of Christmas and New Year's, 250 for 25 Wow. I never in my other business could get anybody rarely to have a showing during that time, you know, because mm -hmm. people are in what we call Christmas coma. <laughs> I, back to back almost every day. Because 250, I go, I'm not even in your house yet. 
Mm. And we're $250 ahead, you know, and they're like, that's crazy. Mm. You know, it's just crazy. And um, a show, what we, what we call a show or consider a show is $200 net. Um, you could take a $30 order and put it in the computer and Park Lane's still going to pay you, okay? But all of this hops in at a $200 net show. So one of the things I sort of want to just remind you of is when you're doing like a private appointment or something, and she, you know, we get where I've got people now that we get new jewelry like really basically every single month. So I have certain groups of ladies or singles that are like, as soon as the new jewelry comes, make an appointment with me. I want to see it, you know. Um, they can go and they can place their own order, of course. But let's say... Um, this girl's placing an order, and she ordered like 150, and then she did her 12, 12, 12 freeze. So she's at 150 net. And just to kind of give you a little clarification about net and non, when you take an order form, net is right here. Net is what people pay for their full price items. That's considered net. Okay? What would you think if you had a guess that an average order is in our group? If you had a guess. The average net. The sales. average net order. $100. Because almost everybody goes for level three. Because it's the best value. Mm -hmm. It's by far the best value. Okay? So if they spend $100 and then they get their $100 items for 12, 12, 12 free, this would be a $100 net order. Get it? Okay, $200 net is considered a show. So this girl's sitting there across from you. She's just going to place an individual order. She's up to 150 net. What if you can say to her, you want any items for half price? Because remember, half price items are net. We get paid on those. Okay? We get paid on them, and they count towards the net of the show. Okay? So if you're able to say to her, you want any items for half price? And she's like, yeah. And then she just added another $50 to that net. Now you can say... Guess what now? You, you want a thank you gift? Right. You want 100 for 10? You want $20 for the order you just placed? You want to take advantage of the hostess only? Mm -hmm. Do you see how one mm -hmm. visitation with a person turns into a show? Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's so fun. So net is, you'll hear Park Lane talk about net and non. Net is what we get paid on. Net is what determines, you know, the show value. Um, non is the $12 items and the hostess. Whenever it has anything to do with money, it's going to be net. Whenever it has to do with contests and stuff, we usually get to, we get to count net plus non. And if you're feeling a little dizzy with all this, that's totally normal. <laughs> It'll all come to you. It'll all, you know, I like to just kind of go over some of this stuff to make sure that we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And later, when you're like, wait a minute, I know she said something about that. You know, and we're a phone call, an email away. And like I said, you could go home and rewatch this on YouTube if you want to, you know. So, okay, so we did the customer buying program. We talked about the hostess program. I want to talk to you real quickly about how we do a show. And, um, or showing. It's the most brilliant. When I was going to start this business, my national director said, did you watch the um, DVD in the kit yet? And I go, no. She's kind of cocky. I go, I probably won't do what she does anyway. And she goes, Yes, you will. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I guess I will. Um, but in Park Lane, it's what we call the roller method. Have you all been to a show before? Uh, Haven't even been to a show yet? Oh, you have so much to look forward to. Um, I don't know if everybody on the phone has been to a show before, but it's absolutely brilliant. And here's what we do. Okay, we walk in. We put our black tablecloth out. We give everybody a wish list and a pen. That's it. One more thing. This is a Scott idea, too, and other people. Maybe have a little section that the only thing you have there for them to play with is, like, hostess-only items and three booking things, okay? Because that way, too, right from the get-go, you're like, those are really special items, and they're kind of getting attached to them. They like something from the very beginning. And also, you'll notice as you start to do showings that if you just have your hostess-onlys in with everything else, there's always this one person that keeps picking up the hostess-only and going, how much is this one? And you're like, oh, that's a... How it... <laughs> Darn it! You know, so this kind of keeps them from getting, they're just all right there in the beginning. And it gives them something to play with and stuff too, okay? Okay. Then we bring out our rolls of jewelry. 
and we unroll the jewelry one collection at a time. However you want to do it, we usually color code them or, you know, out um, ensemble them. Um, the rule of thumb is ideally they go, don't bring more than 60 pieces of jewelry. You know, um, eight rollers with eight pieces each or something is about 64 pieces of jewelry. I, I preach that. I, I know I bring too much sometimes. Um, but we unroll it. And can you picture what this does for you as a, as a um, presenter? As you're unrolling the jewelry? First of all, it they come closer. Mm -hmm. Okay? So instead of having this whole boutique presentation thing where people come and go, you got their attention. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then as you're unrolling the jewelry, what you want to make sure you do is put a piece of jewelry, you know, get their permission. Some people are a little standoffish, but after all, put the jewelry on everybody in the area. My favorite, um, my most comfortable setting is just like this, sitting at a table mm. with me too, sitting at the table with them, you know, um, right down at their level and all that. But then I would get up and I would begin to put the jewelry on people. One of the things that we've done in our group that I think has really contributed to our success is we've just learned too to really make it about some fashion tips. So we'll pop in fashion tips as we do it. I have, um, I made up a whole sheet of them called things to know as you unroll. I'll be happy to forward it to you. But an example is I'll put a long necklace on someone and I'll say, now, now here's the deal with a long necklace. We're also, you don't need this, but we're all so hard on ourselves. What a long necklace does is it draws the eye down, it makes you look taller, and it takes off 10 to 15 pounds sideways. And there's always someone who goes, I'll take 10. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you get it what I'm saying, like a fashion mm -hmm. tip, you know. So you'll learn different ones of those, but we unroll we put the jewelry on people and we share fashion tips. Now, people think that, you know, I'm the rep, so they think, well, of course she's gonna say that looks nice on me, you know, because I'll look at, and I go, Shannon, that looks really, I love the rose gold with your hair. And they're complimented, and I really do only say it when I mean it, but they're thinking, well, yeah, you're gonna say that. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you're with a bunch of girls and her girlfriend looks over at her and goes, that really does look good on you, Shannon. Yeah. Okay? The other thing is once people have, um, jewelry has an emotional component. <laughs> it's an emotional connection. And once they have it on, they want it. Mm -hmm. They want it. Okay? Like you. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> right? And then people tell you how nice it looks and you're like, oh, and it just makes you feel better and stuff like that. One of the little, per little pointers I love to put in there is... Um, uh, ideally, ideally, they say about 85% of your wardrobe budget should be spent on accessories. Oh, wow. I know. And they're, I'm like, have you ever heard that before? And they're like, How no. Much? And I'll go, 85%. 85%. I'll go, well, now, it includes your shoes and purses. And then mm -hmm. they go, oh. And I'll go, well, think about it. I said, one of the things that we love to use in, as, a, as an example is men. When men buy a suit, it's an investment. It's an investment. They don't just go off and buy a suit, you know, mm -hmm. unless they're very, very, very wealthy. It's usually kind of a big deal. I can remember when my dad was going to get a new suit. It was a big deal, okay? They could wear that same suit three times a week for 15 years. That's not what we notice. What do we notice? The, the tie, the shirt, the watch, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's really the same thing with women, mm -hmm. right? Basic sales premise. Love to teach this to people right from the get-go. When you're selling something and you want to make a connection with people, ideally what you almost want to do is take it from a want to a need. And here's what I mean, okay? Some people might come into the showing, I mean, they, they know what they're coming to buy jewelry. Maybe they want to buy some jewelry because it's their friend's party, or they maybe want a little bit of jewelry, okay? They come into the show, we start saying all these little hints and stuff. They don't just want it anymore. Now they need it. They need it so they'll look thinner. <laughs> they need it so that they'll save money on their wardrobe. Get it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why as we put those things in, we make them realize that there really is like a need for this. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep you on trend. That's one of my favorite things, you know, because I'm, you know, in my 50s or whatever. But no one will ever accuse you of trying too hard because your accessories are on trend. You know, it would look inappropriate for me to wear a vinyl mini skirt and fishnets or whatever. But... Nobody, people are only going to think like, oh, look at, she's right, mm -hmm. she's on trend. You know, mm -hmm. it's very flattering. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest mistakes women make as we get older is we don't, um, we, we have outdated settings on our jewelry, you know. So, anyway, I can teach you way, 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 way more of this 
great <laughs> stuff when you come to or listen to trainings because we're all about it. So did that give you some, okay? Mm -hmm. So wish list, and then you go, as I enroll things, oh, did I say anything about books? No. Oh, you, you know care. why? They're hidden. <laughs> <laughs> no books. Nobody gets to see a book. Nobody. And I, and I advise that you hide them because then they don't even ask for one. Because if that one person gets one, then it's like, blah, 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 blah. okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's the teacher in me, too, that it, personally it just bugs me mm -hmm. when, like, I'm talking a little bit and people are all looking. It just bugs me. They're distracted. But seriously, we have some really cool, neat things to say, and they're going to miss it if they have their face in the book. But yeah. the most important thing is they get sticker shock because mm -hmm. they weren't listening to you do the customer buying program, and they don't get it. When people ask for books ahead of time before their show, I'm telling you what, I'll do almost anything to avoid it. <laughs> I'll do almost anything, you know, um, because here's what happens. And I feel like I can just really, I can um, have candor with them now, you know, because I have a relationship with my hostesses, and I'll say, well, if I give you a book, okay, make your wish list, but don't take it to work because here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're going to leave it in the lunchroom. Somebody's going to mosey on in. Open the book and it's going to open to the four hundred ninety nine dollars signature bracelet, right. and they're going to go, oh! and then they're going to go next to the next cubicle and go, "Are you going to her show? I'm not going. Did right. you know there's bracelets in there for four hundred ninety nine? Yeah, because <laughs> they don't get it. So something that I learned to do until they get the and our hostesses get very savvy. They get where they can do their own outside orders and all that good stuff, and they can do a good job with the pricing. But when I actually was kind of proud of myself for coming up with this one, but when someone would say, "Can I have some books?" I have some people, I go, are they mostly all from the same place? And they usually are. Yeah, my girlfriend's from work. We have a meeting that night. Or, yeah, there's a family reunion and a bunch of people can't come. It's usually a group of people can't come because some, okay? So I'll say, you know what? What if I just run down there? I'll run down there with mm -hmm. my little bag of jewelry. It shows so much more beautifully in person. And that way you don't have to explain the pricing. I make mm -hmm. it all about them because it is. And they go, oh, you would do that? And it was it's really neat, you guys, because then mm -hmm. I get additional bookings. I mm -hmm. sell way more. I run out of there with hundreds of dollars in orders where they wouldn't have understood and they would have each mm -hmm. ordered like Manny earrings for ten bucks or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's very it's a really, really, really fun and smart thing to do. I've even had pre parties. Like they'll be like, Oh, so and so just already knows they can't come. You know, I'll reach out to that person and I'll say, You want me to I heard you can't come. I have an opening, blah blah blah. Why don't I just run on over and take your order? I can show you a couple of the pieces so you can see them in person. Mm -hmm. They're like, wow. And then almost like an over-the-shoulder, I'll be like, if you want your mom or a sister or someone else to come too, that's fine. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You just turned it into a showing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that's how it works. Are you getting more excited? You want your kid right now, <laughs> don't you? Very, 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 very fun. So that's kind of how we do a, a mock show, and they write on their wish list. And then um, as they're playing in the jewelry, you sometimes want to make that transition from playing to, okay, let's get this rocking. You know, let's get these orders taken. So I'll usually say, um, does somebody have a really nice wish list that I could just use as an example? Because most people are visual learners. I say those exact words. And someone will say, sure. Mm -hmm. And I'll take their wish list and I'll transfer it. I am the keeper of the order forms. You know, at that point, I'll give everybody books. You know, I'm doing that. I'm the keeper of the order forms and I will do my, I call it my magic math on an order form. And then I'll say, now everybody gather around. I want to show you how I did this. And then I'll, I'll, I'll show them visually the girl's wish list mm -hmm. and how, and then I always put on what it would have been. Like, okay, so it's $925 mm -hmm. worth of jewelry for $247. And then I always put what they saved. Now, mm -hmm. psychologically, this is a really smart thing to do because somebody's in the back and they're watching you and listening and the girl that whose order you just did is going, oh my gosh, sold. And the one in the back's going, Huh. She bought two hundred forty seven dollars worth. I'm going to do, you know. <laughs> or wow, that is a really good deal. How could I turn it down kind of thing? Okay. So that's kind of how you get them transferred onto the the order forms and that's how you begin to close it all out. Where are we doing on time? Getting there. About ten more minutes. Okay. You wanna hear about money? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most of us join a company or decide to sell because we want to make money. Can we share these? Okay. And this is what I refer to as our money oh, okay. mountain. Our money mountain. Okay. 
most people, where we start, right down here where it says fashion director. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make you dizzy with this. I'm just going to kind of take you up mm -hmm. a couple of it. But we all start as, um, most of us start as fashion directors, and we get a 30% commission on the net. Okay? So basically, average order is $100. Just picture every, almost every time someone's handing you an order, $33 you just made. $33. Can you see why it's worth meeting with three people if you just paid $99? Usually more. It's really cool. Okay, once you sell $5,000, could take you a year, could take you a month, could take you a week, you'll get a raise and you'll go to 32% for the rest of your life. And that's one of the things that's really cool about Park Lane is you never go backwards. Once you achieve a title and a raise, you never lose it. You always keep your raise, you always keep your title. So, I taught my kids this. I like to teach you to this. I'm like, pay now, play later. <laughs> I'm like, let's take you up the money mountain because you're never going to go backwards. How exciting is this? Okay, so you can get a raise, but there's a faster, smarter way, and that is bring in one person. Bring one person into the business, and you go to what we call a branch director, and you go to 35% on your own shows. Truthfully, the main reason you're doing this is for the raise on your own self because you're going to get a 5% raise. And I have to ask you, I mean, do you hear about people getting 5% raises very often these no, days? No. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And that you could do it in your first month of business. Right. I had a, a gal, a, a lot of times, 100%, 100% of us go to branch in, in our first couple months. Because it's mm -hmm. one person that you're, and they're going to believe you before they believe me. Seriously. Mm -hmm. When I go, oh, yeah, yeah, my last paycheck was $11,000 for one week. They go, oh, but you'll go, I just made $150 at my first show. They'll go, really? <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding. They will believe you before they believe me. Because they think, oh, well, that's you and you're so far. You know, all that ridiculous stuff where you could be too. But, you know, but they'd see that immediate, you know. Um, and I just, this is where when we talked about that, we were going to talk about selling. And we were going to talk about booking. But we were also going to talk about recruiting. This is when I'm going to give you my little pep talk about recruiting. Anybody have a bad attitude about recruiting? <laughs> I did. I did. Be honest if you do. Be honest. Okay. I was so afraid, like, of being viewed as one of those people. Like, I had this cousin that worked for this one company that was totally mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was based on, like, you buying a bunch every month and stuff like that. This is not that at all. Mm -hmm. I like to call it hiring. We're not trying to get anybody to spend their own money. We're trying to help people make money. Everybody mm -hmm. wants money, you know? So I call it hiring. But anyway, so every time this cousin would come near us, you know, at the family reunion, right. we'd be like, here she comes run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so afraid of being viewed as that mm -hmm. person that I went the whole other way. I'm going to tell you really quick something that happened to me because it changed everything. I, I was sitting at it. I was doing a, a show. Really sharp lady in the first row. She stopped the whole show and she said, Mary Grace, Mary Grace, I have to ask you. She goes, I am a high-level corporate whatever at wherever, downtown St. Louis. And she said, I would love to hire someone with your energy. And she said, if you come in tomorrow, come to the front desk, ask for me. I will hire you. I will find something for you. Well, right in that minute, and there's like 12 people there, and they're all looking at me. How do you think I felt? On top of the world. Flattered. Mm -hmm. And I didn't take the job, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. What I learned is we're too attached to the answer. We should be attached to the offering. It's, it's, it's a compliment when I offer this job to people. If I, if I want to work with them, it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. And if they say no, they say no, but they're still complimented. Mm -hmm. So it changed everything in my head. And then the other thing that I, and they'll be thanking you. I get thank you letters all the time from people. Oh, thank you for introducing me to business, changed my life, helped us, you know. And I was losing out on all of that by being so selfish mm -hmm. of thinking, oh, I don't want someone to think that of me. It's so silly. We just have to have more confidence in what we have to offer, which mm -hmm. is this wonderful thing. Um, and then I always have to tell the McDonald's story to new people. I just have to. But I always talk about, you know, when McDonald's began, the, the first um, documented, um, or the first foray into fast food, okay? Very successful, obviously. People loved the premise. Well, pretty quickly, McDonald's was at capacity. They had one building. The McDonald brothers were running it. It didn't matter. They had every shift covered. 24 hours a day, they got as many people in and out as they could. That's how much money they were going to make doing that. And it was a lot. It was good. However, along comes Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc comes in, sees what they're doing there, and he goes, I have an idea. 
I want to buy your plan. And I want to open your plan in other areas. And you'll get a percentage mm -hmm. every time I open the plan. Mm -hmm. First documented instance of franchising. Mm -hmm. They got rich, but Ray Kroc became a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is why you want to recruit. All right? Because you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. And especially you guys being right here on the bottom of this thing, I mean, it will pay you dividends forever. When people ask me, do you have paid vacation? Do you have insurance? I'm like, yes. Recruiting. Because <laughs> when I go on vacation, I still have a huge paycheck waiting for me when I get back. Because, of, because I've set up other mm -hmm. franchises. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you do want to make sure you're building that into your business. Because at doing shows, you're responsible for 100% of your own income. Mm -hmm. But if you recruit, there's other people out there. And you can only do so much. Right. I could do four shows a day. I don't know if I could. I could do three. I have done three a, a day and do 21 shows a week. You know, but that's about all I can do. But with our group, you know, sometimes my group is bringing in a few hundred shows a week. And, it, you know, it's just exponential growth, just spreading mm -hmm. the word, right? Mm -hmm. So I really want to put that idea in your head earlier because I don't want you to do what I did, which was very stupid. Okay. Yes, very stupid of me. I lost a lot of valuable time. Until, did that click in your head when mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, it's so flattering when mm -hmm. someone wants to hire you. It We're is. too attached to the no. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like if you offered somebody a, a cookie and they say no thank you, you don't go commit Harry Carey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, I'm never offering someone a cookie again. You know, it's like maybe they were full. Maybe they're allergic to chocolate. Maybe they're on a diet, you know. Mm -hmm. But you still offer, right? Okay. So that's my little lecture about that. But you bring in one person and you go to branch director and 35% for the rest of your life. And then we always double promote people. And this is high as high as I'm going to take you today. But I always do this for new people because I've had new people come in and go. Fashion director, branch, area, like within a two to three month time frame. And it's because they learned how to do it here. You let us know you're working on it. We're here for you. We're going to work you through it. But when you go from branch to area, what you do is you bring in, over a two month time frame, five more people. Five more people. Now here's the beauty of it. They don't, the people don't have to come from you. They can come from your people. Okay. You only have to be bring in two of them, and the other three can come from your people. All right? Okay. I'm going to give you a little example. Okay? You recruit Shannon in order to become a branch. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're a branch. You got your 35%. Well, Shannon wants to be a branch, mm -hmm. so she brings in someone. Mm -hmm. That person counts towards your next five. Oh, I get okay. it. In the meantime, you've brought somebody in, outs mm -hmm. in, and she wants to be a branch. So really, the whole secret is... Selling people on branch, which they all want. Like I told you, almost 100% of our reps become branch. But then you, you know, but you're the, the one right here going, oh my gosh, you know. And then over the course of the two months, you do 10 shows. You do 10 shows. Piece of cake, okay? And then you go to 40 to 50% on your own shows. 40 to 50% on your own shows. I make uh, 45 to 50. So it's really one of the biggest raises you get on your own shows for the rest of your life. Those five people could all disappear the next day, but you still make 40 to 50% on your own shows for the rest of your life. Okay, now here's where, but this is what starts to make you rich, too. Um, where it says 10% on your FDs, those are your fashion directors. So these new people that you bring in, okay, is they're out doing an average show's $500. They're doing a $500 show, $50 is popping into your paycheck. Okay. So you're making your 40 to 50% but they're out there making 10% for you in other places. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that five times. Now imagine five people doing five shows a month. Mm -hmm. This is where it's just, it's mm -hmm. mind-boggling. You know, this is how you hear about people starting to make checks of like $11,000 a week. Because mm -hmm. you got all these people out there doing all those shows. Can you see why I get very passionate about recruiting? Mm -hmm. It's really, really fun. In the meantime, they love you because they're making all this money. And then they're bringing more people under your team. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sisterhood. It's a really really cool thing. We are like building a dream team here. Okay. So that's um, pretty much the profit plan in a, in a nutshell. And I'm always kind of going back and looking at it too. Um, the last thing I wanted to go over with you just very quickly is Park Lane will reward you um, your first six months of business based on how much you sell. And it's called our Superstar Program. And it's really, really neat. And your first six months are your first six months. So, like, if you start on, I'm just going to throw numbers out there, January 15th, then February 15th or thereabouts is your first full month. 
Um, you'll get a welcome to Park Lane letter, and on the back it tells you your first six months of business. But also, don't stress it too much. I send you an email every single week telling where you where you are, and it's pretty much just I like that. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's pretty much just repetitive. But if you sell a thousand dollars net plus nine, um, you get to go pick two hundred dollars worth of free jewelry. If you sell a thousand and recruit one on top of that, you get two four hundred dollars worth of free jewelry. Or if you just sell 2000 So there's two ways to get the 400 And it'll come to you. I know. It'll come to you. But basically when people say, how do you get all this jewelry? You know, it's because we're getting to add it through Superstart, our first six months of business. Right? Now there's also a program called Success Builders. And that's for all of us for the whole rest of our life. And the main thing about Success Builders is when we sell $2,500 in a month. Remember how I told you earlier we get new jewelry every single month? you automatically get the new jewelry. It just shows up in the mail. Okay? And when you're new, you get to double dip. So you're getting your 400 here, and then you're getting that in the mail, and you can see how we really don't want to see you spending any money. We want to see you making money. Mm -hmm. You'll hear us talk about this a lot in Park Lane. It's a program that our national director, Shannon Pell, came up with because she was reading all this, and she had to look on like you do, like, how can people keep track? What? You know. And here's what she figured out. Five and one. If you want everything, you do five shows a month, and you recruit one person a month, and you'll get everything. And when I say everything, and then you train other people to do it too. When I say everything, I don't mean, okay, you did five shows a month, so average show is $500, you sold your $2,500, you just got your jewelry for next month, okay? Five shows a month, you're obviously going to get level two of Superstar every single month. <laughs> but you'll also get this. And it's at, a, at the next meeting, I'll do a visual for you. Because we've done a visual with people and dragging them up to the front of the room. If you did five and one and trained your people to do the same thing, you would be up to, like, division in six months. Thousands of dollars in your pocket. And it's like, can you really imagine a job where they're like, well, we would like you to work 10 to 15 hours a month. And we'll pay you thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. It's, like, laughable. Mm -hmm. 10 to 15 hours a month. Not a week. A month. Now, do you have to do five and one? No. But it's just a rubric for success. It's just mm -hmm. a little bit. So you'll hear us talking about five and one all the time. Okay? There is, um, you want to write this down, myparklane.com. Myparklane.com. And what you can do is go in and register yourself, lead you through it, so that you can get access to all of the really fun uh, field interface and computer things. Um, this is the one expense that we do have annually. Um, you can buy either a $50 or a $150 membership. The, you want to get, we can enter your first show, so don't worry before your first show we can enter. But when you want to go start entering shows, one really cool thing, you know, most companies have like credit card fees and stuff. If we have the $50 a year, we just put in people's credit cards and Park Lane takes care of all the credit card fees. Okay, so that in itself. We don't, we just have to mail in orders. Can you imagine? Oh my God, it makes me nauseous. Um, so you can just do it on the computer. It also, um, it just gives you all the perks. 150 a year gives you a few extra things. Um, and you can read up on this later, but it gives you like your own individual website. So like people can go into your website and shop. Gives you, um, you're part of what we call the consultant locator. So depending on where you live, it can be particularly valuable. So like when put, someone puts in my zip code, I will pop up there. So they see her there. Um, and you can get 500 free business cards. What a lot of, see, the way that we have our program set up is do your intro show, okay? You're going to get your kit, you're going to get jewelry, and most likely you're going to get a paycheck. Angela can enter your intro show. You haven't spent a penny, okay? You just got a check from Park Lane. Take 50 of it mm -hmm. and register for a year for your thing. You can always upgrade later. Okay, mm -hmm. so a couple months in, you can say, my gosh, this thing's really getting some legs here. This is going to be good. Then you could go in and pay the other 100 if you want to be the platinum. Okay, does that make mm -hmm. sense to you? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think, Deb, I know you're off in the corner over there, but did I forget anything really important? Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got this big calendar here. Wednesdays are very, very, very important days in Park Lane World. And the Levines even did this on purpose because they didn't want us feeling like, you know, like, Usually people's deadlines are on a Friday, and they didn't want our weekends being ruined or whatever. So Wednesdays are a big day in Park Lane world. And Park Lane speaks in terms of week ending, okay? So if they said week of 3-6, 3-6 started on today, February 28th, okay? 
It takes a little bit to get used to it. And again, we help you with this stuff. We send you, you know, stuff. But week of 3-6 ends on February 28th, okay? Um, so anything that you get in on a Wednesday of in Park Lane World, by really, we really have till Thursday because we have till like 3 o'clock in the morning. But you want to get all your shows in on Wednesday if you want to get a paycheck. They'll cut a paycheck for you on Friday. Mm -hmm. Your direct deposit, and they've really encouraged us to promote direct deposit because it saves them a lot of money and then they can pay us better. Um, your direct deposit thing will show up on, I love Fridays because I get to go in and look and see what my check's going to be. And then the actual check is like in your bank like late Monday night or, or you know, if you have a paper copy, your check will be in your mail on Monday. So Wednesdays, and then, isn't that pretty cool? You get paid like two days later. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So we get paid every single week, and that in itself is really, really, really cool. Um, so the last day of March in Park Lane World, who wants to guess? The 21st. The 27th. The 27th. The last Wednesday. So our first day of March in Park Lane World is today. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Okay, because yesterday was the last Wednesday. <laughs> you'll get you'll get so used to it, but it's the Wednesdays. And sometimes this really wonderful, beautifully greatest thing ever happens when we have like a five-week month, you know. So it's really fun because, you know, those goals like the 2,500 to get an extra week and all that good stuff. And looking at this, I'm betting you April's maybe a five-week month because if the first day of April is the 28th, that's going to be a nice long month for us. So I just wanted to tell you about the, the Wednesdays. And we keep you in the loop. We let you know when we have mm -hmm. different trainings and stuff. And I am just so excited to have you. I just really want to welcome you to mm -hmm. Park Lane. And we um, we have a whole bunch of fun. We do a whole lot of neat activities to support you. We actually have a fashion show that we're doing on April 11th. Um, our CEO is actually coming, so you'll get to meet him. And it's nothing like him when you see him in Mm -hmm. See him in action. It's really cool, and he helps us add to our team and stuff. So, does anybody have any questions? Especially things you would think would apply to everybody, because then, then we could turn this off. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't have any. No. You feel like you covered it? Did you feel like I got everything in there? Goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm. See you in real life in Chicago.